implementing the polynomial technique in MATLAB. The challenge here is really that MATLAB does not have any symbolic capability. Well, actually, that's not true. They have a symbolic toolbox, and there is a way to do this with the symbolic toolbox. I'm talking about using just the fully numerical MATLAB, but still implementing this polynomial technique. And we'll finish with some examples. Implementing the polynomial technique in MATLAB. So let's remember the general form of our polynomial fit, where we have our sort of symbolic function values. We have the polynomial coefficients we're trying to find, and we have this huge X matrix. But what is inside the X matrix? It is some kind of constant times an H, some kind of constant times an H squared, some constant times an H all the way to the N value. So that X matrix has this general form and it'll turn out this is what makes it possible to do this in MATLAB fully numerically, even though we have these symbolic H's there. We can take the X matrix from the previous slide and factor out the symbolic H's. That becomes a diagonal matrix with a one H, H squared, all the way up to H sub M. So inside this matrix are the symbolic variables. The fact that we have factored out those symbolic variables means that what's left is all stuff that we can put numbers to. And so this is not the X matrix necessarily anymore because we have factored out the H's. But if we pretend that H equals one, this matrix will be the X matrix. So that's actually how we build this. We just pretend H is one and build the X matrix and we get this. In our minds, we're going to track that we actually are post multiplying by this diagonal matrix that has our H terms. But in MATLAB, all we have to do is process this fully numerical matrix, and that's what makes this possible. So we solved the matrix equation on the previous slide for our polynomial coefficients. And if you remember the, the rule of matrix inverses, we're going to reverse the order of those two matrices and have to take the inverse of each one individually. Well, this is a diagonal matrix. That's easy. So we just take the reciprocal of all the elements going down the diagonal. The second matrix is numerical. So we can do that in MATLAB and we can calculate the inverse matrix. And I'm writing the elements here as V, but just remember that's the elements of the inverse of the W matrix. So this V matrix, would be the Y matrix from the previous slide, the inverse of the X matrix for that special case where H equals one. So we can kind of pretend that when we're looking at these numbers, but mentally let's actually have the symbolic H is now pre-multiplying this inverse matrix. At this point, we can incorporate our symbolic H again. And now it's this that we know that we can read off the rows and these are essentially our finite difference coefficients. This first row would be how we would interpolate the function value at our at our the point we're interested in. We have our first order derivative and so on. So we actually have a way now that we have the symbolic finite difference approximations, but we only had to do a matrix inverse of a fully numerical matrix. Let's go ahead and fill in the steps. Let's extract our polynomial coefficient. So we're multiplying this top row by the column vector of f's, and that's our a sub naught polynomial coefficient. Then we multiply the second row by our column vector of f's, and that's our a1 polynomial coefficient, and so on. We can read off all of our polynomial coefficients. Given those, we can write our approximations. We can interpolate the function value using the a naught polynomial coefficient. And that's this line. We can, we can calculate or estimate our first order derivative with the a sub one polynomial coefficient. And these terms up here was the second row in that V matrix, but now we're going to divide by the symbolic H. And our second order derivative, basically the same things going on here, but we have to multiply by this factor too. That's a real easy thing to forget. But this was the third row in that V matrix, and we just have to remember to divide by H squared, and of course, multiply by two. Let's go through some examples, and hopefully that will clear up what we're doing. 
So let's do something kind of cool. Let's calculate a six order accurate finite difference. So this means we need seven points. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Now I'll add this little, we're writing this as a row vector, but it should actually be a column vector. And this is not really a transpose. This is just a notation so that when we really have a column vector, we can write it as a row vector. And this is used all the time for printing things on paper where you just don't want to take up all the space of writing that vertically. But this truly is a column vector and that's just our notation so we can write it as a row vector. So don't think of it as an actual transpose that your computer program's doing. That will be constructed from the beginning as a column vector. From there, we're going to build our W matrix, which is like building the X matrix from the previous lecture with H set to one. So this becomes our X column vector. And again, I'm using this notation so I can write it as a row vector so I don't take up all this precious, precious vertical space. And so it's not actually a transpose operation. From there, we'll build the W matrix. So we have our X column vector to the zero power, which we know we don't actually do. We're going to insert all ones. But then the next column is our, this X column vector, then the X column vector squared and cubed into the fourth and fifth and sixth, finally. And that's our W matrix, which is our X matrix if H was exactly one. And it's just in our minds, we're tracking, yes, there's actually this H matrix that has our H's going down the diagonal, our symbolic H's, but we're just keeping that in mind. We don't actually have to worry about that in MATLAB. So then in MATLAB, we can invert this W matrix to get our V matrix. And now we would be essentially in our minds, pre-multiplying this by the inverse of that H matrix. So that's the inverse calculated via MATLAB, but MATLAB's not thinking about that symbolic matrix. It just inverted the W matrix. Well, now we can just immediately write our finite difference approximations. We just have to remember to divide by H or divide by something that we'll get into. Okay, so this first row is essentially our A naught polynomial coefficient, and it's just those numbers multiplying all of our Fs. For this first one, where we're interpolating the function itself, we just divide by one. Now for the first order derivative, we read off the numbers from the second row. Those numbers are multiplying our Fs, but we have to remember to divide by H. Then for our second order derivative, we're reading off the third row. We are letting those multiply all the Fs. We are remembering to multiply by two and divide by H squared. So in MATLAB, it's as easy as just constructing that, that column vector X, building the W matrix, inverting it, reading off the rows, but just remember to divide by one or H or H squared and multiply by two when we get to the second order derivative. Let's do something really crazy. So we have you know, sort of randomly positioned points and we're calculating a finite difference at some sort of intermediate point and nothing's a convenient number here. So given these points shown in black, we would like to evaluate our derivatives at x equals 4.4. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to choose our points. So I'm going to choose an array of points. I'm going to choose 2.6, 3.2, 4.7, and 5.6. I could grab more if I wanted to, but I decided to only grab these four and calculate my finite difference right here. Then I'm going to translate these coordinates to place zero where we want to calculate our finite difference. So we take these the original point values, subtract 4.4, and now we have our offset values. Notice there's no zero in here, and that's because where we're calculating our finite difference doesn't happen to fall exactly on where any of our points are. So no need to be alarmed not seeing a zero in here. Those are our offset coordinates. Now we'll build the X matrix. So our first column's all ones. We have our offset coordinates, offset coordinates squared, offset coordinates cubed. Then we invert the X matrix to get the Y matrix. Now I do wanna mention, notice we haven't been carrying around the symbolic H and that's because we entered our actual 
x values we didn't put it in terms of h we entered fully numerical values from the beginning so we don't need the h and that's why we're talking about the actual x matrix and the actual y matrix here well from the y matrix we can just write our finite differences the first one we're just interpolating the function that's the first polynomial coefficient we're just reading off the numbers here now h is, is incorporated in here so we just use those numbers multiplying f's on the second row, this will be our first order derivative. We just multiply those numbers by our f's, and we don't have to divide by h because the h was already incorporated into the original coordinates. We didn't factor that out. Then our second order derivative, we're reading off the third row. We're writing those multiplying the f's, but remember to multiply by two. And the third order derivative, if we ever needed that, I believe we multiplied by six, and I have no idea what's higher than that. I'd have to derive it. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.